you found this skeleton, how would you tell people that you found this skeleton? You first, you first, you first, how would you decide? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's this. Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here. I wanted to talk to you about a sadly now rather inactive, but still wonderful website. This website is Serena, a natural history of the world of birds. It is a website that went up in March 2017 and was last updated October 2018. It was created by Dylan Bajda. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. His DeviantArt page is linked in the description. So why am I talking about some website you've never heard of that's been dead for more than a year as of the time of this video? Well, it's because I want to talk about monophyly and long-term evolution in the context of looking forward in time. I'm sure you've heard a creationist say something along the lines of, you say going forward that dogs will always produce dogs, but in the past, non-dogs produced dogs, so what changed? Of course, nothing changed. It's just that anti-evolutionists tend to have a fundamental misunderstanding about evolution. They tend to imagine organisms in kinds that conform to some imagined platonic ideal and that the emergence of a nuclease is the leaving behind of the old kind of organism to become a new kind. This is why they say things like, show me a half-man, half-ape, even though that makes no more sense than asking to see a half-lizard, half-reptile. So what is the Serena project about? It's a speculative evolution project set on the moon of a gas giant that orbits an unnamed star. The world of Serena is seeded with some Earth life, including grasses, most notably bamboo, Asexual crayfish, sunflowers, crickets, ants, live-bearing fish, water weeds, tons of small worms, various bacteria, algae, moss, liverworts, a smorgasbord of small arthropods, hermit crabs, gastropods, jellyfish, and most significantly, a single tetrapod. That is, Serenus canaria domestica, the domesticated canary. It is the canaries that the website focuses on most closely. To connect this to the original point, the canaries on Serena end up diversifying to fill a huge variety of niches, from aquatic filter feeders to titanic herbivores to apex predators and even endoparasites. So let's take a look at some of the evolution of canaries on Serena. Here we see a few different canary species from 10,000 years after Serena is first seeded with life. All are very similar to the ancestral canary, although each eats a particular diet. I think we can all safely say that this falls well within the range of what most creationists would find acceptable. And they'd still say, it's just a canary. And they're right. They're all still canaries. Well now, 25 million years in and things are getting a bit interesting. These animals are still just canaries, and the structure of their beaks and their facial markings help mark them out as such. They have no particular features that aren't simply resized canary anatomy. But still, this is a far cry from the little perching bird of Earth. And interestingly, in the background what looks like a tree is in fact a sunflower. Still though, no canary has ever laid an egg that hatched anything but a canary, and no sunflower on this world has ever spread a seed that grew into anything but a sunflower. 65 million years in, and while the structure of a bird is still obviously intact, in this herbivore it has adapted keratinous plates on its tongue to function as stand-in teeth allowing it to chew. Still though, we're looking at a canary. At around the same time as our sharp-tongued friend from before, we see this terrifying creature that recalls Tyrannosaurus of Earth's Cretaceous. But still, this is a canary and it even has other small canaries on it. Now, some hundred million years into the future, we can see all sorts of crazy animals. We have something that looks like a bird turned into a deer, birds with no feathers, just tiny scales like the ones that normally occur on bird feet and legs, birds that use their wings for brachiation, duck-like ground animals. But again, they're all just canaries. Here we see some frightening animals, one that even looks like an eldritch monstrosity from the works of H.P. Lovecraft, and the other a fairly ordinary-looking canary, but one that's packing simple flint knives. But they're still canaries. At this point, can anyone say that this wouldn't represent an enormous amount of macroevolution? Of course not. And I know that this is all fictional, but the point is that evolution will work the same into the future as it has in the past. Just as primitive cynodonts in the Permian gave rise to mammals, including elephants and humans and echidnas, all of which are still cynodonts, in this hypothetical world, canaries gave rise to tentacle monsters, deer-like animals, animals that look like a cross between a plucked turkey and a turtle, etc. But still, those things are all canaries, even if they ended up looking only vaguely like any canary you've ever seen. So remember, any modern organisms only seem to be their own thing because of our limited ability to see the past and future. If you could see the whole history of life on Earth, the branching pattern would be clear, 
and it would be obvious nonsense, as opposed to not entirely obvious nonsense, to ask about why dogs could come from something that wasn't a dog, but not produce things that aren't dogs. For example, that tentacle monster is called a bludgebird. It started out as a normal canary, then diverged into a group called snuffles, then to mittens, then to bludgebirds. But all snuffles are canaries, and all mittens are snuffles, and all bludgebirds are mittens. Just like all dogs are canines, and all canines are carnivores, and all carnivores are ferungulatans, and all ferungulatans are lorisotherians. Evolution works the same way now as in the past, and it will work the same way in the future. Well, that's largely it for this video, but I want to take some time to thank a couple of viewers. One is Jill. Jill bought me a webcam for my Amazon wishlist, and I wanted to take some time to thank her. The other is Bob Knob, who got me a new microphone. If you'd like to get me anything for my wishlist, it's linked below. I'd also like to thank my patrons Bob Knob, Amos Marcos, and Ben Tovind for rendering for me on Sheepit. If you'd like to know how to help me this way, please check the video description. Finally, before you go, please take some time to pursue the Serena website. It's linked in the description, and I only showed you a tiny fraction of the excellent work that can be found there. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to take a few moments to thank my patrons, especially my $20 patrons, Bob Knob and Res Instance. All of my patrons are helping me produce these videos by helping me get better equipment and software. If you'd like to help, head over to my Patreon. I have tiers starting as low as a dollar a month and every bit helps. If a monthly donation isn't right for you but you still want to help, please visit my merch store or my Amazon wishlist. All links are in the description. Even if you can't help monetarily, your views and comments help more than you know. So please, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you always know when there's new Dapper Dino content. Again, thanks for watching. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know.